Hi, this is Alana, and welcome to the Praying Christian Woman podcast. We are here today with another Coffee Break episode where we are sitting down with you guys, at least in spirit, with our coffee or tea or your beverage of choice to discuss some of the questions that you guys have about prayer. So thank you for those of you who have submitted your questions. We're really excited. Today we're going to be talking about praying for your spouse. And before we dive into the discussion, Jamie, could you open us in a word of prayer? Sure. God, we just thank you for bringing us together again today. And we just ask that you would be present here, Lord, that your Holy Spirit would guide this conversation and just be preparing hearts to hear whatever it is that you have for them through this episode. God, we lift up marriages. We just thank you so much for the gift of marriage. Even when it's hard, God, we just, we pray that you would help us to see the picture of Christ and the church um, and, and the sacrifice that we somehow sometimes have to make and the difficulties that we have to walk through, but that you are in them. God, I just lift up every woman right now who is in a marriage that is difficult. I pray that you would show them your provision, your comfort, your strength, your wisdom, God, that is above any wisdom that we could possibly have in our human minds. And I just pray that you would allow them to see glimpses of your hand at work in their own marriages and just transformation within themselves through your, your Holy Spirit, God, and, and just through um, pursuing you and, and being fulfilled in that relationship with you, God, that there, would, that there would be improvement in their earthly marriage to their husband, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So I know usually for our coffee breaks, we don't start with it just for fun, but I was thinking of one that I thought could be cool to start since we're talking about praying for your husband. Um, so if you're comfortable answering, Jamie, what is your husband's biggest pet peeve or what, like, what's something you do that just drives your husband bonkers? I would have to say my driving. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Are you like a, a crazy lane swerver? <laughs> uh, no. The thing is, I am so different from him. He's an engineer and he optimizes everything. So in his mind, he is an extremely focused driver, but it also makes him a very impatient driver. Mm -hmm. So like, I think driving actually has taken years off of his life already. I shouldn't Aww, even say that, guy. right? But he is so stressed out. And so, but he, like, for instance, um, if I have to turn, a lot of times I'm thinking, you know, I'm talking to the person in the passenger seat or thinking about kids behind me or caught up in my own thoughts. And I think, oh, wait, I need to turn. So at the last minute, I turn my signal on and I get in and I turn. For him, he's like, if you know you're going to turn in a mile, You'll be in that lane be already. In the ideal yeah. lane for that ahead of time because you have this right hand lane as long as no one's there. Okay. Um, or if you're, I don't know, um, just, he just really, if you're going to stop at a stoplight, this is something that I've learned over the years, really bothers him. I sometimes wait until too late to put on the brakes. And it's not that I jar the brakes, but it's just right. a little- It's like, just not as slow and smooth as he would do when it. When you see a red light, why wouldn't you just start slowing down? <laughs> oh, that's funny. You know, he's just a planner and I am a fly by the seat of my pantser, um, but- and, and I'm not super alert and aware of my surroundings. I have to say, uh -huh, I have to say uh -huh. that. Yeah. If, um, I'm not the best driver, but I've actually made efforts to be better. And I, ha and it's the, not the kind of thing where I'm just trying to make him happy. I really have become a better driver, but mm -hmm. I still will not drive with him. Like if, if we, it's just unspoken. If I go to pick him up at the airport, I move into the passenger seat. I don't like driving when he's in the car that much anymore. And he doesn't like not driving when I'm in the car. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's how it is for us. I've only driven my husband like maybe five times in the past five years. <laughs> yeah. And the last great. time, I, well, the last time I did, I'm kind of the opposite. Like I'm sort of a, um, I don't want to offend anybody, but like the stereotypical, like super cautious granny driver, like hands on 10 and two, <laughs> one mile above the speeding limit at right. max, you know? So I'm, I'm like that. Like it can take me 10 extra minutes to, you know, like if it takes my husband 15 minutes to get somewhere, it can take me like over 20 minutes to get there. <laughs> um, so yeah, he drives and it's no big deal. For me though, um, it, it kind of is similar in terms of like, who's the planner, because for us, what drives my husband really up the wall is if I make things too complicated, 
because right. for me, I'm, I'm into making things efficient, even if it means that like to set it up, you have to be ridiculously inefficient. Right. Like let's go here, 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 and then here, because that's going to end up saving us $5 as opposed to let's go here and get it all done kind of thing. Right. So I've gotten better, but, um, yeah, I can make things really, really complicated and sometimes it's just not worth the hassle of doing that. Yeah. So, well, we're going to jump in. We're combining two questions because they're kind of similar. So Kate wrote in and asked us, how do I pray for my husband who doesn't like me and hasn't our whole marriage? And Kate, our hearts really do go out to you. Uh, you're not alone. This sadly is a very uh, common occurrence that wives may find themselves in. Um, and so we definitely want to address both your question and I'm sure some of the, the hurt that it's coming from. And then Helen writes in with a similar question about praying for a spouse and says, how do I pray for an unsaved husband who believes in aliens and UFOs? So we're talking today about praying for your husband when your marriage isn't where you want it to be. You know, I guess that's kind of the, the blanket yeah. uh, statements that we can say. And like I said, this is so common and not something that we talk about a lot because let's face it, we're not supposed to walk around complaining about our marriages like that doesn't benefit anybody. But sometimes we need to, sometimes that makes you feel alone if you are in a, a difficult point in your own marriage. And so we just want to acknowledge, yes, this can be hard. This could be a thing where there's no real easy answers, but we definitely want to try to leave you with some inspiration and encouragement and maybe even some helpful tips for your prayer life that even if they don't change your marriage overnight might help you in this situation. I agree. And, you know, I feel like in general, this whole topic of uh, this is this whole topic is kind of when you and your husband aren't on the same page. And I feel like whether it's a chronic problem that that causes a huge wedge in your marriage, like if you believe that your husband doesn't like you or if you have an unsaved husband and you are saved and you're totally, um, but there are smaller things that I think everyone listening can relate to who is married or in a relationship is there are so many areas where we are not on the same page. And I think for me personally, my husband and I are so different. And I think I've shared this before where we went to a marriage conference. I think we were already married. We were either engaged or married. I think we were already married, but um, newly married. And we were assigned animals based on our personalities. It was one of those personality test things you do. And what we were assigned was, I think I was the golden retriever, which has become kind of a joke in our, you know, in our marriage. It's like, oh yeah, I'm the golden retriever. And he was a lion. And I still remember, you know, we're kind of laughing about our animal assignments. And then on the stage, the guy's like, but you know, just be cautioned. If you are a golden retriever and a lion and you're matched together, your life is going to be hard. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you know, our marriage, our marriage has had some ups and downs like anyone else, but it is, it's, we are so different. And what I have come to realize though, is there were times when I prayed, God, why couldn't I just be married to someone that's like me? And there was one time, I don't even know when it was that I got a glimpse of myself. And I thought to myself, if I were married to someone just like me, I would drive myself crazy. That would be a disaster. Yeah. So, no, and yeah. And not to mention the fact that, and I'll be really honest, there have been other times when I'm like, well, well, if I had married so-and-so, or if, if I was married mm -hmm. to someone like someone, someone like this, yeah. which is a very dangerous, very dangerous. Mm -hmm. I do not, I mean, caution, don't go caution, there, yeah. <laughs> caution, don't go there, but it's crossed my mind at desperate times. And, mm -hmm. and God has shown me, even if, you think you know what's good for you. I have placed you in this, you know, difficult situation, not that my marriage is the difficult situation, but in this difficult situation in your relationship to sanctify you, to, to make you better. And mm -hmm. he, your husband, even though right now he's, he's friction, he is coaxing you into exactly what I want you to be. Yeah. And nobody else could have done that. Mm -hmm. So that that's something that um, I feel like is an important 
starting point to recognize is even in what you might feel is a miserable marriage, mm-hmm. um, God is using it. Yeah. Uh, God is using it. I think this might be a good time. I mean, I know we just love disclaimers, but I think this would be a good time to just lay it out there. We are not talking about abusive situations. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Those are cases where uh, you do what you need to do to get yourself. And if you have children involved safe and then you figure out from there <laughs> yeah. what you're going to do. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm really, really glad you brought that up. So thank you for the disclaimer. Um, I've been reading this business book, but when it, the kind of main premise of it is no matter what you choose in life, there's going to be trials in it. Mm-hmm. So basically it's, you choose your trials <laughs> and you know, so like if you want to take two extremes, you're homeless and starving and that's a trial or you're not homeless and not starving, but you're worried about money and, or you're, you know, you're eating yourself to death and are going to die of a heart attack. Do you know what I mean? It's kind of like, there's no single lifestyle that doesn't come with problems. Mm -hmm. And so I think about this sometimes. I think all of us can be tempted to go down the what ifs, you know, if my husband were just like this, you know, life would be so much easier. No, it wouldn't necessarily be easier. You would just have a different set of struggles. Mm-hmm. And so that's helpful to remember as well. It's not, it's not like being married to this person means I have trouble. And if I weren't married to this person, I wouldn't have trouble. It would just mean different kinds of trouble <laughs> that you'd have. Sure. And I think anyone that has been married to more than one person in their lifetime can attest to that, you know, mm-hmm. and, and I, you know, I've had friends who have had multiple marriages and who have said, it doesn't get easier. You know, it doesn't get different. It's just a different Mm -hmm. set of different set of things, different set of trouble. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. 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 Um, but let's, let's dive in. Let's just start with Kate's question. Like, how do you pray for a husband who doesn't like you? Yeah. And I think the first, the first question, and I don't know if this is, I think the first question is, to acknowledge that believing that he doesn't like you and him actually not liking you might be two different things. I'm so glad you started with that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. And I don't really know how to, uh, but yeah, to, to maybe back up from that starting point and say, you know what, whatever he's doing, because I know in my own marriage being so different, my husband and I, I very frequently will assume things based on things that he says. And that that's one of his pet peeves also is him saying, I wasn't even thinking that. And I'll verbalize something and he'll say, that wasn't where I was coming from. Mm -hmm. I'm upset about this. Um, and I will give you one very specific example. Um, when I, so I, I have a kind of chronic issue of housekeeping. I just feel like I can never get on top of it and it frustrates me. And for the longest time I would get upset because I would not do what I needed to do around the house. And I would be upset thinking my husband wouldn't be happy because he'd come home and I still have the same laundry on the couch or something. And I would get frustrated. And, and the other day, even he said this multiple times, but the other day he was like, I'm not even upset about the laundry. I'm upset that you're upset. Yeah. Right. If you were happy, I would not be. So I was projecting my displeasure with myself okay. onto him. So I think, yeah, maybe going to God before praying for your husband and just saying, God, help me to get a picture of, you know, truth and teasing exactly. out what you're only what is true and, mm-hmm. and taking out some of those other assumptions. Yeah. For those of you who don't know, I started a new podcast for Christian authors. And one of the episodes was dealing with negativity from, you know, lots of people in your life. And I spent a little bit of time talking about negativity from your spouse. And and that was my first thing too, is, is this really negativity? Like sometimes your husband comes home and says, what do you do all day? And if you're insecure, your first thought, Jamie would be, oh no, he's upset because he can tell I didn't clean the house. Right. When it could very well be, he wants to know what you did today. He's just interested. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, check into that first. Um, see, 
And another thing is I have found that resentment is one of the, just the worst toxins in a relationship. Mm -hmm. And if you're feeling like your husband resents or despises you, it's very hard to not grow resentful yourself. Back. But I feel mm -hmm. like um, resentment can really be something that you really need deliverance from, you know, not just a, yeah, God, I'm sorry for resenting my husband, but just, it can be kind of, it can have the same sort of power as an addiction. You know, if, if you've been in this same place for decades where he hates you, you hate him, you bicker all the time, you grumble against him in your mind all the time, you're sure that he's grumbling against you. That's a stronghold that I would start with in prayer for you, confessing the, any resentments, bitterness, disappointment, envy, you know, if, if you are one of those people who looks at someone else's marriage and envies what they have or what you think they have, I would start before praying for God to change your husband. I would start, and, and this isn't, this is a hard pill to swallow. It start with the things that you can confess. And I'm not saying that if you're in a difficult marriage, it's your fault. Mm -mm. Um, you know, like I would never go to a woman whose husband had an affair and say, well, what'd you do wrong to make him want to go somewhere else? I think right. that's a horrible mindset, but we do need to take responsibility for our own sins. So if your husband has an affair and you despise him and harbor unforgiveness, then the affair is not your fault. But the unforgiveness and hatred that you're harboring is something that you need to confess. So I would say in any kind of relationship, when you're having an issue with somebody else, it's really tempting to just say, God, can't you see how terrible this person is? Can't you see that I need you to change them so that my life is easier? When really, we need to start by doing an inventory of the things that we can confess and take responsibility for. And we actually have another coffee break. It was, I just looked it up. It's, it's coffee break um, episode number 15. And it's, how do I pray for someone I can't forgive, which is kind of the, after mm -hmm. the confession, there's, there's yeah. forgiveness that needs to be extended. And so that episode might be helpful. Cause I know we talk about um, Corey Ten Boom and her mm -hmm. example of forgiveness being like a bell. And I'm not going to go into that now, but you really should listen to that. It's a very beautiful picture of forgiveness and just the cleansing but the fact that it takes, it's a process and it takes sure. time. Yeah. yeah. But I love what you said just about, you know, I think prayer in every, it really seems like in every arena, prayer starts with us. It starts in, in us because we can't change people. And, and I think if we begin in any arena praying for people, if we just pray for God to change them without first reflecting on ourselves, I just think, um, I just don't think it's as effective because really when we get changed, when God changes us, it opens doors that we, without us, even without any effort on our own part, it opens doors for change. Um, next week, we're actually going to be airing an interview with, um, with Leslie Strobel about praying um, that she and her husband, Lee, um, wrote the book surviving a spiritual mismatch and it was uh, just a really great book and it just talks a lot about how she personally when she became a Christian and received you know there was a lot of resentment um, the movie the case for Christ was based on mm -hmm. the marriage and the book of course was written by Lee but anyway it was um but yeah, it was, it was just a really, she has a lot of great advice. So do stay tuned for next week as well, just for praying for your husband in general, but particularly that process of focusing on your relationship with God and how the ripple effects really do spread out and can cause improvement without even any focus on your spouse. Not that that doesn't right. need to happen, but yeah. Right. Another thing that you can start to do to, as the first step toward kind of combating resentment or things like that is to make it just a daily ritual to give thanks for your husband and to pray blessings over your husband. It might be really hard at first to even think of what you would want to thank God for. The 
the pain and the dysfunction might be so great that you don't even know where to start. And if that's the case, then I would say you start by praying, God, help me to be okay praying for my husband. Mm -hmm. You know, pray for the willingness if the willingness isn't there. But it's really hard to stay mad at somebody that you are thoroughly blessing with your prayers. And so the more thoroughly you can pray blessing over your husband, even if he's a jerk, even if at this moment, it feels as if neither of you can stand each other. I'm not going to say that God's going to wave a magic wand and you guys are going to fall in love and have a strife-free happily ever after, but it is absolutely going to help. And even if things don't change on his end, it's going to make sure that your conscience is right before God, which is all you can do. You can't make your husband like you. You can't make your husband be nice to you. You can't make your husband want to be helpful or respectful around the house or anything like that. But you can take ownership of not being resentful, not being bitter, forgiving, where forgiveness needs to be extended, and really just leave the rest up to God. And, you know, this is such a, I feel bad for giving like glib statements when I know that there's way more involved than this. And especially in cases where there is physical abuse or things like that. Um, no, I'm not going to tell you to just go and pray it away. <laughs> I'm going to tell you to go and get yourself and your kids away if you need to. Mm-hmm. But um, so yeah, even though we're, we, In this short episode, we don't have time to go into the deep, deep nuances involved here. But if you need someone to talk through that, that's when you do go to a counselor, a pastor, some kind of confidential um, crisis line if you need it, or, or someone who can look more closely into your specific situation and help you see more clearly. And I would say if in cases of abuse, if you get if you go to someone and they gloss over it i mean i have heard unfortunately mm-hmm. about people going to church leaders and mm-hmm. being dismissed well submit to your husband and he'll be or better to you pray more or yeah. pray more right if you get dismissed keep keep pushing or yeah. if you go to a pastor and he says oh marriage is marriage go to someone a christian that that can give you godly counsel that's going to hear you make sure that you're heard I think yeah. is really important. Um, and you know, something that I feel like is um, common to both of these requests, both of these questions, both Kate's and Helen's, who, you know, Helen said that her husband believes in aliens and UFOs, but not God, is finding common ground with your spouse. Um, just pray for God to open your eyes to common ground, um, to things where, um, where you have a connection. Um, and I don't know, like, uh, just even praying for opportunities for connection. Um, because I just think even if it's not a spiritual connection, if there's anything, um, it can serve as the starting point for healing sometimes. And, you know, maybe God can do that. And kind of to move into Helen's question about her husband believing in aliens and UFOs. So I, I've always found it interesting with people that have no problem believing in ghosts or aliens or UFOs, but adamantly deny the possibility that there could be a God. I, I've always found that mm-hmm. interesting and right. kind of contradictory. Yeah. Um, But for a husband that does believe in aliens and UFOs, this isn't the kind of person that's like, what I see is all there is. This is a person that believes in possibility of something out there that, you know, is beyond our comprehension or knowledge now. And I just wonder if that's a springboard that you could use for conversation or at the very least prayer, just praying, God, use Mm -hmm. his, he's searching for something because in him he wants, I mean, God has planted, I believe in us, this, this hole that only the divine can fill. And I I wonder if that's what he's longing for, if that's maybe the avenue that could even bring common ground. So I don't know that just to me. Yeah. That's really cool. And regardless of how you and your husband um, agree or disagree on theology, I feel like it's it's still godly to love and respect your husband. Mm-hmm. And so some people 
who are married to an unbeliever or to somebody who isn't acting like a believer, they kind of can make it a point of pride that they're standoffish, you know, Mm -hmm. my husband is like this, but I know that that's silly, you know, like, um, just pick something silly. My husband loves to, to watch football. And I know that that's so ungodly. No football's football, you know? And so sometimes we need to just accept our husbands for who and what they are in the, the book by Lee and Leslie Strabell. She talks about during the time where she was a Christian and he wasn't, finding that common ground was really important. You know, mm-hmm. both of their inclinations were to pull farther and farther away from each other. Mm-hmm. And it took effort on both of their parts to find things that they still both enjoy, you mm-hmm. know? So as long as it's, it's not sinful, find the things that you can enjoy with, you know, maybe you like watching alien movies and you're worried that by watching these movies with your husband, it's going to pull him deeper from the Lord. And I could see that being the case in some cases, but I could also see sometimes, hey, you want to watch a sci-fi movie? Yeah, this is something that we can do together. Maybe it can lead to some discussions. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, not everyone's going to uh, agree with me, <laughs> but I, I kind of have this thing like angels are the definition of extraterrestrials in my mind. Like they are living sentient beings, not from Earth, right? <laughs> yeah, I have the same thought. <laughs> yes, there is intelligent life in the universe that's not human. It's all the angels that God made. So, mm-hmm. you know, maybe instead of coming at it, you know, butting heads, maybe find the areas where there are those common grounds and coming alongside mm-hmm. shoulder to shoulder. Again, kind of blanket statements. I want to go back real quick. I'm going to give you guys the number for the uh, domestic violence hotline. If you are in one of those situations where you you are um, in an abusive situation or just need someone to talk through, and that's 1-800-799-7233. I'll try to remember to read it one more time at the end if you don't have a way to write it down right now. But again, that's the National Domestic Violence Hotline. Um, that should at least work in the U.S. And I know they've got like a website chat. Um, if you're not in the U.S. and that number doesn't work, you know, I'm sure you can Google um, something similar in your area. Mm-hmm. But yeah, going back to just praying for your unbelieving spouse. Um, yes, it's important for sure to pray for their salvation, but also to remember like that, that really is between them and the Lord. The fact that your husband remains unsaved does not mean that you're like, I feel like some women have it in their hearts and minds that until their husband is saved, they need to withhold some of their love as, as in like, mm-hmm. maybe they're almost betraying God um, right. by, by loving somebody. And I think that for the sake of marital harmony, which is godly, <laughs> you know, to be in harmony in a marriage, I think that sometimes you just, you make that distinction um, we don't talk about the Lord and we like to watch football, you know, or, or whatever it is that you guys like to do. No, my husband's not saved, but he sure has a great sense of humor. And so we love to tell jokes to each other. Finding those things I think is really important. Yeah, I do too. And I know we'll talk more next week with Leslie about this, but she mentioned in her book, Lee told her from the perspective of a man that was an atheist when they, when she became a believer and was resentful toward her faith, who is now a, you know, Christian preacher, um, that when she became a believer, he assumed certain things. He assumed that she wouldn't, she, he, he thought of Jesus as the other man. Mm -hmm. He thought of Jesus as she is giving her heart to this guy and he was jealous and he assumed that she would withdraw from him physically, Mm -hmm. emotionally, everything. And he said it was so important to continue to engage with her physically and emotionally and to do things that they liked doing together because Mm -hmm. it reassured him that, okay, she still loves me. I need to know this. And a lot of his bitterness toward her faith came from insecurity that she didn't love him anymore. Right. Yeah. But anyway. What's the name of that book? Do you remember? Surviving a Spiritual Spiritual Mismatch. Mismatch. Yeah. So, um, Helen, if you're hearing this, go ahead and send us an email 
at connect at prayingchristianwomen.com. We would love to send you a copy yes. of that um, book. You too, Kate, if that would be a, a blessing for you. And yes, yes please, please tune do. in when we air the interview with Leslie, because it's, mm-hmm. it's a truly, um, it's both an inspiring story to hear what she went through, but it's also just so practically helpful. I would say, even if you're not married to an unbeliever, but you're married to somebody who maybe doesn't take their faith as seriously as you do, um, I feel like just about everything that they talk about this in, in this book would also apply in a situation like that. Well, and it there's just great relationship advice. I found myself applying things they said to, you know, even friendships and things like that, where I feel like there's a lot of good stuff. So yeah, don't feel like you have to have problems in your marriage to listen in. Yeah. Um, One last thing that I was thinking just with prayer in regards to prayer for husbands in this case, um, just to pray for truth, to prevail, pray that God would open their eyes and that he would just lift the veil of deception that the enemy has surrounding your husbands. Um, whether in, in Kate's case, if you know, you feel that your husband doesn't like you and never has that he would, God would open his eyes to who you are, that he would open his eyes to the beautiful thing of marriage. Um, for Helen, you know, that you would pray just that God would open his eyes to the spiritual reality of Jesus and God, um, and then to pray against enemy attacks. I just, I feel that those are two real effective things you can be praying just to really get in the thick of the battle for your husbands to open doors for God to speak. Yeah. Well, let me give you all the, um, that hotline number one more time, and then we can close with our prayers for the unsaved, which is another practical resource. Yes. Oh, and speaking of practical resources, we also have a YouTube playlist of prayers for your husband, whether you're in a super blissful, happy marriage or a terrible marriage or anywhere in between. Um, kind of like our prayers for the unsaved, it's, it's different ways to pray for your unsaved friends. The praying for your husband is just different topics that you can be praying for your husband. That is on uh, the Praying Christian Women YouTube channel, just called Praying for Your Husband. So one more time, if you need the National Domestic Violence Hotline number, 1-800-799-7233. Okay. Are we, do we want to jump into prayers for the unsaved? Yeah. Okay. Well, if you didn't already know, this is a time when we um, pray for the one to three people that God has placed on our hearts to pray for, for the long haul that we're going to be just faithfully praying for them until we see God's hand moving in their lives. Um, If you haven't done that, just hit the pause and just ask God to bring one to three people to mind. I mean, even just one. Um, if you have a list of 20 or 25 or 30, we've talked before about this, consider focusing smaller in this particular case. I mean, obviously we don't want to discourage you if you've got this and you're praying for all those people faithfully, but sometimes that can actually be an overwhelming thing. So just to kind of reassess that list and say, God, who are these really specific people that you want me to to be focusing on. Um, and if you enjoy these prayers, you can go to prayingchristianwomen.com slash unsaved and sign up to receive all 30 of them, one a day to you into your inbox so that you can pray, not just with us on coffee breaks, but anytime. Right. Let's pray. God, I confess that I am not the disciple I should be. I'm so focused on my own comfort and my own desires. Teach me to be more like you, Lord. Teach me to be willing to lay down my own plans and dreams and surrender them all to you. Please be with my friend today too, Lord. Teach them that there is no greater joy than to follow you. Teach them that everything else is garbage compared to the surpassing greatness of knowing you as Lord. Whatever is going through my friend's mind today, let them count the cost of being your disciple and joyfully choose to walk with you both now and for eternity. Amen. Amen. So we want to thank both Kate and Helen for sending in your questions. And you can submit your questions to us at prayingchristianwomen.com slash questions for future Coffee Break episodes. And again, we want to just remind you to tune in for our interview with Leslie Strobel about praying for an unsaved husband or praying when you're in a spiritually mismatched 
marriage. So thanks again for joining us. I will go ahead and close us in a word of prayer and we will talk to you guys next time. Lord, I just thank you so much for the gift of marriage and, and for the trials that do come from being married, God. I pray for anybody who's listening who is in one of those situations where they do need to seek safety and shelter. We just pray that you would deliver them from evil, Lord. I pray blessing for both Kate and Helen who wrote in. I just pray that you would be working amazing miracles in their marriage. Give us all patience as you work in our hearts, as you work in our husband's hearts. Keep us free from resentment. Where there is resentment, please deliver us from that. Just pray that our homes and our families would be beacons of unity and Christian love, Lord. I pray for encouragement for anyone listening whose husband isn't yet saved and just that you would provide them with great spiritual comfort and the fellowship of your spirit. And we thank you for our listeners. Thank you for this show and the opportunity to record these episodes. And we thank you for our husbands and for your great love for us. Amen.